For more than a thousand years, this was the capital of the kingdom of Gugye, once the central province of the ancient land of Shangshung, the cradle of Tibetan civilization. Where only recently there stood a huge gilded image of the Buddha Shakyamuni on the main altar, there now lies a vast empty space. To either side of the great central shrine were a series of projecting platforms upon which sat images of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They too have been desecrated, as if the statues somehow presented the greatest threat to the new ideology. Of the few Westerners who have been able to reach this remarkable lost city since it was opened in 1984, we were the first to be given permission to extensively film and photograph the interiors of the temples. Although the statues are broken, the walls are mostly intact. Covered with paintings, many are preserved in much the way they originally were. Ten-foot-high figures of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, symbolizing aspects of the enlightened mind, such as wisdom and compassion, are each surrounded by different decorative motifs. Many show influences of the Kashmiri painters and the Indo-Persian mythological features that were part of the artistic heritage of the time. few have been seriously damaged and a poor attempt has been made to restore the painting. Such was the skill of the original artists, however, that any attempt at recreation seems futile. At least the damage from the water for the moment has been halted. We were aware that the roof has been recently repaired Inside on the walls is one of the most outstanding collections of frescoes from the Buddhist tantric tradition of Tibet in existence. The temple itself is known as the Demchog Mandala, the mandala of the deity of supreme bliss.
The ceiling of the temple again, like those at Saparang, is covered in the most exquisite paintings and classical patterns and designs. The walls, however, were covered with a thick layer of dust and grime. This made the paintings extremely difficult to see. They were probably executed around the time of Rinchen Sangbo and Atisha, the great Indian pundit who came to Tibet in the 11th century. Like those at Saporang, today they represent the pinnacle of Indian and Tibetan Tantric Buddhist art. We eventually found that by moistening a soft cloth with water, we were able to cut through the layers of dust and excess grime and reveal the true colors of the original paintings. The surface dust itself has probably only recently been applied, a consequence, no doubt, of the initial work done to repair the roof and halt the damage to the murals caused by water leaking from above. Some of the detail in the paintings was exceptional. Even the garments of the figures had figures within figures. The painted surface itself is covered by a layer of varnish, which has served to protect the paintings for all these years. It is our hope that soon we may be able to arrange for these paintings to be cleaned by experts and that the restoration will once again reveal the beauty of these treasures of Buddhist art. <laughs>